Zero has been kicking all kinds of goals lately. They've got an imperial buttload of cash behind them, which has allowed them to jazz up their factory in Scotts Valley, California, and ramp up production to the tune of 15 bikes a day. Nobody else in the performance electric sector is coming close to that number, and I doubt that any of the competition have a $150,000 brake bleeding machine like this one. Zero's lucky that thing wouldn't fit in my pocket. I hate bleeding brakes. Zero's invited me here to check out the upgraded factory as well as to take a ride on the 2015 Zero range, which is a fairly significant upgrade from last year. Battery ranges on the S, DS and SR are up by a modest 10%, but the big news is that now every Zero bike rocks Pirelli tyres, a Bosch ABS system, J1 brakes and custom designed fully adjustable Showa suspension at both ends. So here's a few thoughts over a couple of days of riding. First up, the Zero FX. Coming in under 10 grand US, the FX is the off-roadiest bike in Zero's 2015 stable, as well as the cheapest, the lowest range, the tallest, and the lightest by a country mile. Here we are again, the world's least badass motorcycle gang. Nobody's locking up their daughters, but they're all locking up their power boards. The FX is the only Zero with a removable battery. And once you open up the lockable battery gate, you can slot in either one or two 2.8 kilowatt hour battery modules. With two of them in, you've got a range of 70 miles around town or 44 miles on the highway. Now that's not a big range, but the FX is still big fun. It only makes 27 horsepower, but it pumps out 95 newton metres of torque. That's more torque than a Ducati Hyperstrata in a bike that weighs just 131 kilos. Roll on the throttle hard and you'll get yourself an electric wheelie. You see the fear in that woman's eyes as we thundered past on our electric motorcycles? No? That's because there wasn't any fear. It handles really well. I even thought I might have dragged a peg on it at one point by the cliffs of Santa Cruz. But no, I just left the kickstand half down. One of my favourite use cases for electric bikes is the idea that you can take one of these things and bang it around a bush block after work, or hoon around the suburbs late at night without pissing your neighbours off. The FX is the perfect bike for that kind of thing, and it's the naughtiest thing in the Zero lineup. The next morning, we got out into the hills with the S and DS bikes. The S is the street bike version, the DS stands for dual sport, and while they share a common frame and powertrain, and on paper they look like almost the same bike, in practice they feel completely different. Both bikes use the giant monolith battery pack with the option of a power tank module, giving them a maximum battery capacity of 15.3 kilowatt hours. To give you some idea how big that is, you could run a small house using that battery and some solar panels. The S and DS use a 54 horsepower motor with 92 newton meters of torque. Compared to the high performance SR, they're a fair bit more relaxed off the line. But once you're in the twisty stuff, there's more than enough drive to fire you out of a corner with a sense of purpose. On a tight piece of road, I don't honestly think I'd be much quicker on an SR. And a top speed just shy of 100 miles an hour gives you plenty of room to misbehave. The S feels like a super commuter. It's got narrow bars and mirrors that are great for getting through traffic. It feels compact and friendly to sit on. And on its new Pirelli Sport Demon tires, it steers and handles beautifully in the corners. The DS feels significantly bigger and more aggressive. It's got much wider, higher bars, giving it a more muscular sort of riding stance, and it rides a few centimetres higher in terms of seat height. The seat itself is shaped differently to the S, sort of tapered in more at the sides, and as a big buffer of a bloke, I felt a bit more comfy on the DS than the S. I did feel a bit slower on the road though. The 19-inch front wheel sort of makes the steering a little bit less snappy, and those MT60 dual sport tyres don't give you the same grip and confidence that the sport demons do. We didn't get a chance to take these things up some dirt roads where the DS would likely shine. 
The weight difference between the S and DS is only a couple of kilos, so it's interesting to note that the DS's bigger, wider riding position makes a surprising difference to the range you can get out of a full battery. At city speeds, you get about 9% further on the S, and at highway speeds, you get about 12% further. Mind you, the DS is still getting a whopping 274 kilometer range. According to the Zero guys, they could stick a fairing on these bikes and instantly boost their range figures by about 30%, which shows just how important aerodynamics are in this game. So maybe do that then. We rode the S and DS bikes all the way up from Santa Cruz up to Alice's restaurant on Skyline, which overlooks Silicon Valley. And here's where we'd normally set in for an eight hour wait as our bike sat plugged into the wall. But instead, the Zero team unloaded a fresh van load of big bad SRs with 100% full batteries, and as soon as we'd finished our Kawasaki burgers, we were off again on Zero's flagship performance bike. The SR is best viewed as the S with a rocket up its bum. Apart from its Diablo Rosso 2 tyres, the body and chassis is pretty much identical to the S, but the motor and powertrain is beefed up with 25% more horsepower and 50% more torque. 0 to 60 miles per hour comes down to 3.3 seconds, and if you get too happy with the throttle, well... Ooh. Oh! Oh! As poor old Tilo discovered, there's actually an argument for putting traction control on this thing. The SR is the one you want to ride first if you're not so sure about the whole electric motorcycle thing. It's the one that'll open up your eyes to the fact that before long, electrics are simply going to be better than petrol bikes in just about every metric. They'll be faster, quicker and more powerful. They'll be mechanically simpler and they'll require almost zero maintenance. At some point, they'll become cheaper and along with having zero emissions, they're so efficient that their energy costs will be just about negligible. Of course, there's one metric that keeps people wondering, and while no one else in the group had a problem, it did come back and bite me on the run back to Zero HQ. You're gonna have to, gonna have to go a bit easy on this last bit. Some of the guys have got 39% power left in their batteries and I'm down to 22. Because I've been giving it a little bit of gumboot, apparently. So yeah, I'm just going to go a little bit smoothly through here. So we've got this one more pretty road to do before we get back to the Zero factory. But I've only got 13% battery left. I'm going to hunker down and try and get a bit more aerodynamic here. Maybe I should have shaved my legs like those bicycle boys do. 10% and counting. Oh, this is exciting. Will we need the support truck? Only time will tell. Well, the battery ran out. Not the battery on the Zero, the battery on my GoPro. <laughs> the, uh, the Zero actually made it back with 2% battery to spare, so I guess next time I should just uh, lay off the throttle a little bit, hey? <laughs> Zero's official line is, we're not here to save the planet, we're here to make kick-ass motorcycles that are really, really fun to ride. And electric is one of the best ways to do that. It's hard to disagree, these are great bikes. But then, at the same time, you can't ride through countryside like this. These beautiful redwoods. Look at the way the sun comes through those trees. This is a gorgeous part of the world. And you can't help but thinking, geez, it's worth looking after. To that end, if you haven't thrown a leg over an electric motorcycle yet, I reckon you should give it a go. Find your local Zero dealer and take an FX or an SR for a spin. So far, I haven't seen anyone get off one without a smile on their dial.